Hilda, am I glad to see you? Am I glad to see you? Small white slash, please. Oh, sorry. I dare say you're wondering what I'm doing here behind the counter. Well, I'm standing in That's for... That's a brown. Oh, yes, sorry, yes, sorry. I'm standing in for Rini while she's gone to court for this uh, licence thing, you know. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, thank you. That'll be... Uh, 13 p. 13 p. No, I'm expecting her back any minute. Uh, really, but, uh, well, any second, as a matter of fact. But the thing is, I've got this important... Uh, engagement at the job centre and i just wondered if you could possibly stand in for me while well for her really sorry 15 20 30 40 and 10 is 50. Yep. could you it wouldn't be for very long i mean i'd shut the shop oh, it's a very busy time with people pardon look i've applied for a job in this shop several times but i've never been considered smart enough trustworthy even so why should i do it any favors now not it hilda me well really bradshaw should have made proper arrangements shouldn't she See, she's not fit to run the shop as it is, let alone as an off licence. Oh, nothing personal, of course. Bast. Are you really telling the court, Mrs. Walker, that the presence of a tiny off licence, and that's all it would be, would have serious consequences for your own business? <laughs> no, of course I'm not. Then what are you telling the court? There's absolutely no need for an off licence in the street, none whatsoever. But isn't that for the residents to say? And many of them, according to the applicant's petition, would disagree with you. Are you really suggesting that they are waiting part-lipped for an off-license to open so that they can rush in and buy uh, whatever? Please confine yourself to answering questions, Mrs. Walker. It's Mr. Robson's job to ask them. I'm sorry. Well, yes, I am suggesting that they say your establishment does not satisfy the alcoholic requirements of everyone in the area. People who want to buy a bottle... They've taken a very long time to reach that conclusion, haven't they? I and my dear husband, until his death, have been my host of the Rover's Return for more than 30 years. And not once in that time has there been a suggestion that our service was inadequate. The very opposite is true. We were, and are still, complimented on the breadth of our service. But uh, times and tastes change, Mrs. Walker. Yes, and the Rover's change with them, and sometimes in anticipation of them. I put it to you, Mrs. Walker, that Miss Bradshaw's off-license would be a welcome amenity to the area. Welcome? To whom? Oh, to Miss Bradshaw, obviously. <laughs> and to those friends of hers who signed the petition. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. You may step down. Thank you. She did well, didn't she? Very. Even though she told a pack of lies. Yes, she is. Very convincing lies. Yeah. Hey, there's a little job waiting for you at home. What's that? Cheering up your Hilda. She's very low. Very low. I'll finish it fine first. It's on my list. See, it's all to do with Stan being without the tools of his trade, like. What else? Hilda, being de depressed. Well, among other things. Among other things being mainly Stan? Yeah, I suppose so. Look, uh, it wouldn't be possible to build him another cart, would it, Mr Fairclough? I mean, a window cleaner without a cart is like a bee without a buzz, isn't he? Anything's possible. Ah, but Stanley likes being without a buzz, doesn't he? That is sadly true. One more bet, keep that company. Hey, I've only got the one pair of hands, you know. All right. And you would agree with Mrs Walker, would you, Miss Lynch, that uh, the Rover's return more than adequately serves the licensing needs of the area? Oh, I would. Well, it follows, doesn't it? It follows? Well, Mrs Walker being such an efficient and up-to-the-minute landlady. I see. Thank you very much. Uh, just stay where you are, will you? Because I've no doubt my friend would like to ask you some questions. Oh, sorry, yeah. <clears throat> this question of wine sales, Miss Lynch. Yes. You're not saying you sell a lot of wine at the Rover's Return, are you? Not a lot, no. How much? Well, it's hard to say. It used to be more. Oh, uh -huh. why is that? Well, when the warehouse was going across the street, it burned down, you know. The employees of this warehouse weren't a collection of winos, were they? No, just the bosses. No, what I mean is, they'd send across to us for a bottle when they're having posh lunches. Wining and dining customers. They sent across to the Rover's Return when they were whining and dining important customers? Oh, yes. And could you supply them? Oh, yes. Oh, you stock expensive wines then, too, do you? Vintage wines, not just the popular plonk. Well, I don't know about vintage, but fairly expensive. How much? Oh, at least a pound. <laughs> a pound, eh? And uh, you think that's expensive for a bottle of wine these days? 
I do. And supposing the bosses at the warehouse didn't much care for your pound bottle wines, where did they go for more exotic fare? Well, in that case, we sent out to a selling out shop for it. Thank you, Miss Lynch. Thank you. You can go back to your seat. Uh, that's my case, Your Worships. But if you would stay with me just a minute, Mr. Lawrence. Sorry, Mrs. Walsh. You I did your best. It wasn't very good, but it was your best. Just have to hope he makes up for it. Who is he? The anti-drink man. One can't always be choosy about one's bedfellows. Hello, Chuck. Uh, I've just come in. No, I've not come for you, Stanley. Give us a couple of pies when you've a minute, please. Well, do you want to drink while you're here? No, thanks. I'll have another one. Keep an edge on my appetite. Please yeah, yourself. Shove that on in little order. I'll pay you when things brighten up. Yeah, if they ever do. Oh, they will, though. They will. See what I mean? About Hilda. I mean, she's not herself. Thank you very much, Pat. Uh, will I take for a pint out of this, lovely? Oh, go on, what's the odds? Might as well give him the change, you know. Ooh. Hey, other love, aren't you stopping for one, then? No, no, thanks very much, but uh, I'm not in a drinking mood. Nothing wrong, is it, darling? Oh, just life, Len. Especially my flipping life. <laughs> See what I mean? It's definitely a candidate for the cut. And that big balloon doesn't help much. Do you reckon she's depressed because he's lost his anchor? Well, and the consequences. Like Stanley having the best excuse in the world to indulge in his favourite hobby, boozing. I mean, she has a rough time of it, Hilda, you know. It's not easy to get her down. Go on, Langton. You are. We've got a job to do. We're flipping Bell Hour. Hey, do you need me? I know. What were all that about? I don't know exactly, but I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere up there there was an angel practising take-offs for a quick trip in this vicinity. Yeah. Yeah. What's this? I thought you'd never ask. Ooh. That is the shop key. I've done my stint. I have important business elsewhere. And as your is next of kin, you are, aren't you? No. Where well, you are for now. When I left, there was a large queue of angry people all demanding brown bread and victuals. <laughs> Irene, you'll kill him. I don't think so. Why? Well, you know what they sell of about key holder? They're responsible. Come on. Surely there are enough purveyors of beer, wine and spirits without adding another corrupter of our moral fabric to the list. Do you think he means me? <laughs> I'm afraid he does. Look at the Latin countries. Look at France. I think you've made your point, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, only for a few seconds more, sir. I'm sorry, I think you've had more than your fair share of the court's time. Thank you, sir. I, I'm much obliged for your courtesy and indulgence. But somebody has to call a spade a spade. Drink is the devil's brew. He concocted it on the hobs of hell. Those were the first words I learned from my father. A minister of the church, God rest his soul. That is the application, sir. Thank you. Decision time. Got your fingers crossed, Mrs. Walker. Noshy in our way. Still, we do say it keeps body and soul together. Like bitter beer, as your Stanley will testify. Still down there, is he? Well, where else would he be when he's got no work to do? Certainly not sat here worrying about it. Ah, that's one thing you've got to admit about Stanley. His life is based on some very simple truths. Like, you go out the front door, you turn right for the rover's return. So what do you want, then? How do you know it's not a social call? Cos you never paid me a social call in your life. Or anybody else, for that matter. You've got a very poor opinion of me, Hilda. Mm. Don't suppose it bothers you? No, not much. Hey, you know them wheels off Stan's late lamented cart? Yeah, what about them? Well, I'll give you a quid for them. Each? Pair? Too by the heck. When a body's down and out, that's time to stick the boot in. Best I love. No fear of reprisals, then. Come on, what do you say? Go on, you might as well. I mean, they're no use to him, are they? And they're hardly mementories of a vanished business empire. Oh, where are they? Backyard. Right. There you are, then. 
Buy yourself a stick of licorice and a bag of sherbet. Well, are we all agreed? Something seems to be happening, Mrs. Walker. About time. Oh, I wish they'd stop whispering and decide one way or the other. I think you've got your wish. Well, uh, after long and careful consideration, the magistrates have decided in the circumstances to um, grant the application. What is it? They said you've won. What? No! Oh, sorry. Well, you, you can't win them all, Mrs. Walker. That is one of the most defeatist sentiments in the English language. Standing court. Sorry about that, Mrs. Walker. You can't win them all. The question is, Mr. Smith, do you win mm. any? She seems rather upset with me. You and me both, love. And I have to live with her. Well, near as damn it. They're in league with the brewers, madam. And where will they be going off to now, eh? Not the co-op tea rooms. Oh, no. The nearest boozer, that's where they'll be going. Double gins all round and three cheers for the devil. And who'll be driving their cars home afterwards, eh? Ask yourself that, madam. Do as I say, not as I do. The law's motto. Well, I'm sure you're very right, Mr. Jenkins, but if you would excuse us, come out, bed. Sit down, love. Mrs. Walker? Well, that's all over and done with. Oh, what a palaver. Eh? The British justice grinds exceedingly slow, Bet, but fairly on the whole. That is a matter of opinion. Well, at least we know where we stand. Poles apart, dear. <sighs> Mrs. Walker, I, I, I don't know whether you're going straight home or not, but we have a taxi ordered. Thank you, we have one ourselves. Come along, Bet. One thing about Mrs. Walker, she can bear a grudge. See you in court sometime. Any use for a broken olive branch? Oh, she'll get over it. You think so? Come on. Well, how did you get on? Mrs. Walker. We lost. You never. We did. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, tough. What happened, Mrs. Walker? Bench full of grocers, was he? Yeah, well, it happens. I had a bench full of tobacconists, you know, and I was up for nicking fags. Give me six months. The occupations of the bench are as much a mystery for me as their thinking. We were found wanting. Some of us more than others. <coughs> You're blaming me, aren't you, for losing? Don't be silly. Oh, yes, you are. You've been giving me the flaming fish eye ever since I stepped out of that witness box. You are exaggerating. I must admit I was a trifle annoyed at your simplicity in letting yourself be trapped. I only told the truth. We don't sell enough posh wines. We hardly sell any ordinary ones, for that matter. Well, you needn't have laboured the point. I didn't. Now, look, Mrs Walker, I know you're looking for a scapegoat, but it's not going to be me. I told the truth and nothing but the truth in that court, which is what I was there to do. Nobody's surprised you lost, you know. They all expected it. Don't be ridiculous. Of course they did. You hadn't a leg to stand on. What's wrong with an off-licence in this street, anyway? Now, you just objected to it out of spite. And that's the truth and all. And if you want to fire me for saying that, well, that's your privilege. Yeah, well, as there's uh, very little chance of celebration, I'll uh, just nip down the library. Come on, Stan. Oh, let's have all, eh? Come on. <sighs> I'd better be off and all. Yeah, <laughs> <Ta -ra. laughs> I don't blame Bet, you know. Seemed like it to me. That happened to me, Mrs. Walker. Did everybody expect me to lose? Well, silence speaks louder than words. But I did not oppose Miss Bradshaw out of spite. It's just that I happen to be rather proud of this public house. It's, it's not just a place to buy drink like an off-license. It's, it's a meeting place, a social hub. Oh, it's a home for some people. And I felt that its integrity, its position, its responsibility were being challenged. And so I defended it. And that was my only motive, really. So now you know. Yeah. Hey. Do you believe her? 
I think so. She thinks a lot about this pub, deep down. I'm very pleased for you. Thanks very much. The only thing you have to do now is to buy some stock and then sell it. Oh, I don't think you'll have much difficulty around here. It's hardly an abstemious community. In fact, a platoon from the Salvation Army is reputed to have vanished without trace not all that far from here. <laughs> Good. By the way, what have you done with Ernest? Well, I haven't done anything with him, love. He's gone to see about a job or something. Oh, has he? wonder if he's got back yet. Uh, and congratulations again. I had no doubt you'd win. No doubt at all. Bye. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Walker. My condolences. Good afternoon, Mrs. Walker. Could I have a packet of my usual tea? Yes, certainly. Mm. Thank you. Will you put it on my account? Well, you don't actually have an account at the moment. Not a current account, that is. You haven't been in the shop for some time. You're not saying you can't reopen it, are you? Uh, no. Very well, then. Um, will there be anything else? No, thank you. <laughs> May I say something? Feel free. You heard me tell the court today that I had been in the licensed trade for more than 30 years. Yes. That's a lot of experience. Yes, it is. Mm. If you ever feel that you'd like to avail yourself of that experience, I'd be delighted to offer it. Thank you very much. My pleasure. After all, I have set certain standards at the Rover's return, and it would be a pity if they were undermined at the opposite end of the street. Yes, Mrs. Walker. Ooh, just look at you, Stanley. Tea time nearly, and you're still sodden with drink. I mean, apart from it being a waste of money, what you haven't got, it's a waste of your life. And you haven't got that long, you know, Chuck. Neither of us have. So don't you think you ought to try and make an effort to do something with what's left? I mean, what happened to all them dreams you had when you was a lad? Like being an engine driver or Mother Donald Campbell or something? Well, you couldn't have wanted to be a window cleaner. Nobody dreams about being a window cleaner except George Formby. But seeing as you are one, why don't you try and be the best window cleaner what there is. I mean, you never know. You could win the Duke of Edinburgh's award for window cleaning. But just for once, Stan, just for once, couldn't you try and do something that I could be proud of as well as yourself? Stanley, are you listening to me? Look, I haven't got a car, have I? How can I be a window cleaner without a cart? Oh, shut up. I'm tired. Ooh, what's the use? on both sides. Now, who could have done that? That's my wheel. You what? Both wheels in the old cart. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Hey, that's not bad, is it? Well, who would have thought? Who would have thought, eh? Where are you going? I just thought he might have called in here if he had got a job to celebrate. Well, somehow I think we'd only go straight home now, don't you? Yes. <laughs> hey, it was you, wasn't it? Huh? Hey, get off, what are you doing? Oh, thanks for doing that, Cart. It was just the job. Oh, well, uh, I only did the wheels. It was his idea. Oh, were it? 
Hey, you lovely land fair clothes. What the hell's going on? <laughs> Didn't mean stand a new car. <laughs> yeah, and, he, and he, he painted his name on it. Shit, call me, yeah. Uh... <laughs> All right, Hilda, I don't mind getting kissed. Thanks very much, John. Oh. What about me? Why, what are you doing? Oh, well. I told him I'm browned off, you mate. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, thanks very much, Eddie, but uh, I don't want folks saying I'm promiscuous. Oh, I'm very here, Hilda. <laughs> oh, get him a pint, Jim, better, and everybody else will know. Hey, oh, wait, I've come that. out without me purse. Well, you can have one tick, love, and if Mrs Walker says out, refer her to me. I've got her eating out my arm. Oh. Right, what you're having? Oh, oh, thank right, you right, you're thanks very much, and that's very kind of you. Yeah. Listen, you'll have to go back to work now, you know, Stan. I oh, know, I'll have to face it. <laughs> oh, you big daft, well, love. Get him a pint and all, but... Come on, Ernest, well... Well, I went to the job centre. Yes, I know. Did, did you...? Not exactly, no. Oh. I've got an interview. Oh, good. Where? You'll never guess. Don't tease. Tell me. Over at the warehouse. Cheers, Elder Love. Cheers. 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 Next on Granada Plus, contestants pit their wits, minds and bodies against each other in another gruelling round of The Krypton Factor.